Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to round eight of the North American Grand Prix GT2 Championship coming to you live from Macau in China. One of the most demanding street circuits on the planet, only rivaled by probably uh, Monaco or maybe Long Beach, but uh, it's, uh, it's a very long and uh, tricky circuit and a wet circuit most of the time. But before we get into any further detail, let me introduce to you my regular partner here on Monday nights, Brad Maris. Brad, welcome. It's a great pleasure to be here, Al. I hope our viewers feel the same way after this intense and uh, very fun and exciting Macau race. And also, we are delighted to have with us uh, Rich Roman, current uh, contender in the GT1 Championships, currently uh, second in GT1 and a former GT1 champion. Rich, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I uh, uh, thought I'd pop on in and uh, hang out with you, the two of you, doing a fine job uh, as always, and uh, see what happens in this uh, crazy street circuit here. Yeah, you said it. It's uh, Track conditions are uh, we're in practice right now, and it's wet, it's rainy, and uh, this is probably something we're going to have to look forward to. As uh, previous runnings here, we have uh, 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 dealt with wet conditions. Uh, looking to go probably uh, around 25, 26 laps, more like 25, uh, a little less if it's wet. But Last time we raced here was in March of 2012. Marty Uren won this race in the Lambo Gallardo uh, 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 mixed condition race. Uh, Dave Canavan came in second in the Sun Red, and Tiago Canola came in third, also in a Lambo. So, very tricky race, if I recall. But as you can see, this is, uh, from the pictures here on the screen, this is a very uh, uh, tricky layout. Uh, not much room for error. And uh, very close confines. Let's take a look at this track map while we uh, have a minute here before we jump on over to qualifying. Yeah, and as you do switch over to that track map, I'll say quickly that our conditions are wet at the moment. However, that's, uh, for this track, uh, wet can almost be considered dry conditions as uh, there is a lot of rain that can come down around this place. So 22 corners, uh, 22 turns, I should say. Uh, that middle section of the track, as you'll see in a moment here, are Brad's onboard. Uh, uh, have to have a lot of rhythm going through there. Got to take it. You can be fast, but you also got to be cautious. But uh, let's uh, let's Brad let's let Brad run it down for us here on the onboard. Take it away, Brad. We are off and running around this Macau circuit. Very tough track to get around, as we soon shall see. And tough right from the get-go. The start can be very critical for these guys here on an extremely long, fast run into a high-speed sweeper with Oncos on either side. The smallest mistake there is going to cost uh, a lot of the field, a lot of positions. Okay, you can look for a brake mark here. Columns on the right, building on the right into a very slow right-hander. Tough on the brakes, also tough uh, on the opening laps of those cold brakes. A lot of this place around here is just making sure that you have your entries nice and clean. You're just kind of rolling in on entry. Don't want to be pushing too much, though. If there is one spot uh, of this track where you can push, it is through these last couple corners here. And uh, over the course of the next couple, uh, I got a few bumps on some of these corners that uh, will cause you some difficulty on acceleration. So got a little rhythm section coming up through here. And if you do have some good front grip on your car, it's very critical around this place. This is a section where a lot of the fast guys will really be taking advantage of, uh, of that front grip and gaining some extra speed through these, uh, through these corners here. That section kind of comes to an end right up here in a very tricky, tough braking zone to a right-hander across this uh, little bridge here. The uh, car really always wants to uh, understeer and then on power to, uh, to oversteer. And same with that last right-hander there. So really tricky section coming up here extremely tight uh, single car racing here you can 
get off of that particular corner actually very quickly if you do hit it right on entry and you don't have too much understeer. A blind right-hander here around this hairpin. Lots of problems possible at this corner uh, that we'll see tonight. Hopefully we don't have too many, but it's possible to have a, a track blockage there, which can stack up quite a bit of the field as well. Uh, coming up to here, the last couple corners, these are actually pretty blind entry corners. You can take them with speed, but only if you're set up uh, correctly for them. And coming up here at the last corner, same type of deal here. A lot of guys will be in third, perhaps some in second around this corner. Tightens up pretty dramatically, much more than it appears on entry. So these Armcos are kind of all over the place. The smallest mistake is going to lead to some catastrophic events for these drivers. And that is your lap at Macau. Thank you for that, Brad. Great job. And uh, you took the words right out of my mouth, and after watching that, I realized I've been driving this track all wrong all these years, so... Well, you can't drive it wrong if you stay off the barriers, Al. That's uh, the main thing around here, and if these guys manage to do that, I promise that they will they'll have a great, a great shot to score some points. Well, taking a look at timing and scoring here in practice, Mikey Monahan leading the way in the JAG. So Mikey put some time in and looking pretty decent and in, uh, in the Dunlop shot Jaguar, which would be fought quite well here in the wet actually. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if this car was a pretty good performer around this place. Sorry, I don't know if Rich was going to jump in there. But you know what? That thing does actually have pretty decent low speed grip. So it, it might get around some of these corners pretty damn nicely. Yeah, well, I was going to add to that. Because unfortunately, I believe Mike is uh, going to be serving a no qual. So he'll be having to uh, show a lot of patience tonight, uh, work his way through the field there. Ah, that's right. The old penalty. The old penalty uh, situation. Let's take a quick glance at the penalties here tonight. Apologize for not being uh, as prepared. As we see a lot of uh, mayhem going on here in practice. Hopefully uh, they clean that stuff up for the race. But from last week at Esteril, a race where uh, Aaron Parsons uh, took his third win in the season, uh, and surprisingly, he's uh, fourth in the championship. So he's had a couple uh, uh, no-point finishes, and that's kind of cost him. Otherwise, it, it could be a different cha championship uh, uh, if he hadn't had those issues. But he's still in the hunt, nonetheless. But uh, anyways, going back to Esther, all the penalties. we got Ryan Schleif, Mikey Monahan both with uh, no calls as well as Jaime Moore and Ryan Schleif also serving the 15 second standstill penalty so that was for some uh, more contact on the first lap and a uh, couple at fault penalties uh, Matt Taylor getting uh, 20 kilograms of ballast Ian Jolacor 10 Houston 15 uh, and Jolacor another 20 so actually 30 for Jolacor so he's going to be carrying quite a bit of weight here tonight You know, that 15-second uh, standstill for Ryan Schleif might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> As we move over to qualifying, and it is a dry track, 88-degree track temp, 80-degree uh, ambient, but uh, conditions call for rain, so these guys are want to are going to want to get out there as quickly as possible to put a lap down. It looks like Alex White and David Poole actually might be the first to act. And I made mention of this to Chris on Thursday night's race when we were getting ready to go out to qualifying. I don't know what it is, but David Poole has a knack of being the first guy out every night, every week. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He just, maybe he just gets lucky. He gets uh, his pit stall is right near the exit of the pits, but it always seems like he's the first guy out there. 
Well, it never hurts being prepared and having that qualifying setup on and uh, and being ready on the button, so to speak, uh, right when that session switches over to hit that sucker and get out there. But these should be some fast and furious laps. There's going to be everybody out on the track who feels they have a legitimate shot here to start toward the front uh, to get these laps in just in case it does happen to rain. These guys are really going to be pushing. Uh, but, you know, the smallest mistake here, uh, if you don't happen to get that dry lap in and, uh, and you miss it, the rain comes down, well, you're really going to be hosed then. So a uh, mixture of aggression and caution, I would say, for these guys toward the front. So Bob Moore with Chris Moses, he's actually, actually going to be the first guy to set a lap here as he gingerly makes his way on his out lap. With David Poole right behind him. And... Uh, one more thing we should add is these guys are going to want to put in a good lap early because traffic is going to be an issue. So, Yeah, absolutely. For being such a big track, you'd think that there would be some space, but the nature of uh, the corners here, them being so slow, that it simply will stack up the slower guys. There will be a disparity between the, the faster cars and the slower cars around here, and uh, that's just something that they are going to have to deal with. So as Moses makes his way around, our pole lap here the last time we ran was a 2.17.6 by Tiago Canola. 2.17.6, interesting. Not too shabby. I don't know if we're going to be, if we'll be seeing those kinds of numbers here tonight. I mean, that is a dynamite lap he threw down in that car. Well, I think it's possible Andres Prieto last night uh, over the course of practice did put up a 218 low, I think it was, so uh, given the uh, the soft tires and some low fuel, perhaps uh, perhaps he can better that 217. Heavy braking into turn one, this, uh, actually turn two, I should say, that little kink would be turn one. Turn three just went through, that turn three is going to be... Uh, Gonna, we're going to have to keep an eye on that one because during race conditions, that corner has a tendency to cause a lot of problems. A lot of guys going in there too hot on uh, cold, cold breaks. And we've seen in the past guys either just heading straight into the wall or getting into each other. So hopefully these guys can keep that under control. But nonetheless, Chris Mose is making his way around here. Yeah, that turn three can be a bad one, and you know what, it can be bad also because these guys are going to be so aware of being cautious the first couple corners. Turn two is uh, very tricky. Uh, actually, it would be turn four because turn one is right after the start finish line, so actually that would be turn three. Maybe that's one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. From what I saw on my screen, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, very difficult on that long run, man. These guys are... I, I think that I think everybody's going to be extra cautious here tonight. They know exactly what's at stake, the nature of the track. Ed, there's not a driver here who is thinking push tonight. I can promise it. Every, every single driver here is thinking survive this darn race. And so I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think we'll see some good, clean racing. So <coughs> Moses just uh, getting through that let's turn 20 known as the Melko hairpin, probably one of the trickiest hairpins uh, we race at. As it's, it's almost blind. It's almost a blind right-hander, and it's very tricky to get through there clean. As Moses a big slide as he heads to the start-finish line, and 220.2 for Moses. David Poole, David Poole looks like he backed out of it. Alex White has yet to start. Kevin Savoy, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on him tonight. And the Porsche. I will be right back, guys. Ooh. Oh. Savoir catches a piece of the wall. Go ahead, uh, Rich. I was just going to say before, well, Andres Prado is still up uh, in Sector 1. He's on a time lap getting ready to complete uh, his run here. 
Preto currently second in the championship. His teammate Juan Monroy and Andre Team Columbia leading the uh, team championship. They're looking to make it two in a row as they're the defending team champions from last season. So Preto to the line to P2 oh. as Wyatt Good currently on provisional pole with a 218 flat. Just beating out uh, Preto by three hundredths of a second. Monroy checks in currently P4. with last week's winner Aaron Parsons. Ooh! As it looks like that was either Savoie or uh, Vassman with the with the big impact. Good job of getting out of the way there. So the interesting about thing about this track, uh, we know how tricky it is, but yet it's it seems to be a lot of people's favorite tracks to run. So, I don't know if it's the danger factor or what, but well, these guys really enjoy running here as Parsons is up in Sector 1. He's got one of the Gumperts, one of the Columbia boys up ahead. Well, it just provides such a great challenge, uh, and I think these guys like being challenged by that. Um, it's a... Uh, you have the race for position, and then you have the race to survive uh, as well within that. So it offers challenges uh, in two parts or one or the other. It's an interesting contrast because, you know, we'll run at tracks like, uh, for example, a perfect example was uh, last week at Estero. Where most people despise that track for, for some reason, but... It turned out to be a great race. A lot of these tracks these guys tend to hate usually turn out to be great races. Rich, you've had the opportunity to drive around here a few times. What are your, your secrets to this tough place? Uh, this track for me has always been a track of survival. You know, you just maybe you compromise on the setup a little bit. You just really need to get your car to work well for you and uh, just try and stay off those guardrails um, you know with the changing conditions and everything that, that happens around here it's uh, it's just one of those places you you look at the calendar and you just want to say survive it because you know you'll get a good finish if you can survive so Parsons improved slightly but still behind uh, good who is On a hot lap. So Wyatt and the M3. Our winner at Birmingham. His first time out at NAGP. Wins at Birmingham. He's got a little bit of traffic up ahead. We don't know if that's going to pose an issue. It looks like it might. Oh, and there you have it. So good get. Looks like he got caught up with great tricks there. So not sure what the thought process was there from Greatrix, but nonetheless that uh, put a wrench in good uh, lap as Alex White currently P4 giving the Viper a flash. Yeah, quickly, almost uh, halfway through this qualifying session period here. So uh, Wyatt Gooden doesn't want too many more snafus with uh, that lap traffic for sure because these guys are going to improve their times. I suspect that they can't get clean laps in. Track temperature now 93 degrees. The rain has held off so far. So Alex White moves up to P3. Trying to pick up somebody on a hot lap here. Nobody seems to be running a time lap as Palacio now running P11. He was about two tenths off the pace in the Jag. Yeah, real quickly I'll break in and welcome our viewers there on Twitch TV. It seems uh, my chat for some reason is not working, so uh, we do see you there. Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in.
Yeah, what a great place, though. What a great event uh, with all the, the changeable weather conditions and uh, all the nature. That, whoa. <laughs> go ahead, Brad. Sorry. No, I, it just uh, there you go. A perfect example, you know, uh, trying to maintain uh, some straight body work on your car. So you, whoa. Well, uh, and then avoiding, yeah, <laughs> having to avoid these types of things. Look, it's so difficult. Esteban Palacio here down in 14th. He's wanting to make a time. He's he was probably up on his time, but just doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you got nowhere to go. You just have to, uh, you just have to stay a little patient if you can. Up uh, with Chris Bowes is currently P6, as we have just uh, just under 14 minutes to go here in qualifying. I just want to apologize again for last week's uh, technical snafu. Uh, not sure what happened, but uh, you know, from t time to time, the, the game crashes. Hopefully, we can survive this event here and bring you uh, com complete coverage of tonight's race. I was pretty bumped out about last week at Esserol, and that actually turned out to be a very good race. It was a good race, and unfortunately, uh, uh, I don't think tabbing out here for me is, is going to work to get to any type of broadcast pictures up at all. So I think we'll be okay. We'll stay Oof. optimistic on it. Uh, Moses had a pretty amazing slide through there. Would have been nice if he hung on to it, but met the wall fa fairly heavily. So I don't think that's going to help his lap time much. No, and I don't know that. I don't know if Mercedes is putting into production a rally car um, here recently, so they'll want to avoid that. Uh, I am not sure what's going on here. As there are guys strewn all over the track. Kevin Savoy mixed up there. Marty, you're in. Prado's almost up six tenths. So, on board with Andre. Hopefully he can avoid, ooh, he does avoid a, a Viper. Wow. Just parked in the middle of the road. I don't know if these wow. guys are... Some of these guys appear to be doing a little sightseeing. <laughs> uh, I, I hope that uh, Viper didn't cost uh, Prado too much time because, like I said, he was up six tenths. And, uh, you know, he's, he's wanting to get that pole position. Yeah, that, I don't think it hurt him too much. But he did have to have to go a little wide around and Preto to the line, bang, to Paul. Wow. By nearly half a second with a 217.5. So great result midway through this qualifying here for Preto. And he's still on it. He's got some traffic up ahead, but you know those guys are on hot laps. It's, ooh, looks like that uh, Ferrari's gonna let him by. Yeah, looking at timing and scoring, that Andres Prieto lap was a great lap, but we have all our contenders for the championship, Aaron Parsons included, who has started to sneak up uh, and insert himself into that championship mix. Now, Andres Prieto in first, so Alex White, Aaron Parsons up there, Chris Moses lagging a little bit there in seventh. So Parsons uh, does not improve. I wonder if that weight's having an effect on him here in qualifying. Alex White currently in P3 as we run. Prado's up one tenth on his current pole time so in the first sector. So Prado continues to lay down the law here in qualifying. Ooh, White! A rare mistake for him. As it looked like he had a pretty nice lap going. Let's take a look further down the field. Monroy running fifth. Tiago Canola running P6. He's uh, in the pit lane at the moment. Uh, real quickly, Ravenous, I think that uh, there are a few here and there. Uh, you're welcome to head on over yourself. Mar Marty Uren running P8. David Poole at 9th. Greg Myers doing well. He's in P10. This is a track he was looking forward to. Alejandro Nieto, 11th. Joe LaCour, currently at 12th. Newcomer Ryan Mayfield teaming up with Wyatt Good, currently 14th. 
I take that back. He's just jumped up to P8. So good job for Mayfield. Yeah, and these new guys coming in have shown some speed. They could really uh, throw a wrench into these uh, these championship points for these guys. We have uh, noted that in the last couple races. Mike Trussler currently 15th. Palacio running 16th. David Raleigh. Oh, Raleigh's just jumped up to, to the seventh spot. John Houston 17th. We got a pretty large grid here tonight. Triana 18th. Vassman running at 19th. So Vassman struggling here tonight. Marco Conti running at 20th in the Lambo. Schubeck back at 21st. Talked to Schubeck before the race. He was struggling with the setup on that Mercedes. Hamilton running 22nd. Matt Taylor in the Viper 23rd. Mike Gratrix 24th. Brian Storey's running 25th. Jack Ivey 26th. Jonathan Cuppert. Cuppert, sorry. Filling in tonight. And the Mustang running 27th. John Watton. Someone asked on the chat board if there's anybody from the old no-grip leagues. And yes, John Watton's one of them. Doing a little wall sampling there. Gup Douglas, he's here somewhere. Lou Mascarelli, 29th. Chuck Carter's running 30th. Mikey Monahan with a no qual. Ryan Schleif. Lugnuts back in 35th. I've yet to set a time for Lugnuts. Dan Wilkerson, 36th. And that's it. As Wyatt Good, just as we pick him up, he goes to P1 with a 217-2. Yeah, Wyatt really getting it done that time at the last sector, picking up a full uh, three-tenths. Uh, oh, you did actually pick up quite a bit of time in the second sector as well, so excuse me, take that back. It was in the second sector where he got his damage done. And uh, yeah, jumps up to that pole position, so Andre has a little bit more work to do. All those guys carrying quite a bit of uh, weight ballast, though. So you find yourself in second position, Rich, trying to go for this pole position three tenths down. What uh, you have any strategies for a track like this with six minutes to go? Uh, you know, sometimes. Well, for me, I usually like to do two laps, so a total of three laps, including your out lap. Uh, something like this, I think it might really help you out, and uh, you want to go ahead and just try and find a gap however you can and hope that you don't uh, have somebody pull out of the pit lane in front of you. So we're on board with Preto now as he is trying to answer to Wyatt's current pole lap and he's up in the first sector. Ooh, but he's got some traffic up ahead as Moses does as good a job as ever to get out of Preto's way. And, uh, See if that, I don't think that slowed Preto down too much. Yeah, a guy that uh, I've been keeping my eyeball on a little bit here is Alex White. I missed his second sector time, but you know, Alex is not going to stand for this. He can't uh, can't hardly stand when one person's uh, in front of him here in these qualifying periods, let alone two. Yeah, Alex right now is unfortunately about four tenths off. He'll probably start another lap here, it looks like. You know, a track like this... Uh, way I approach it sometimes is, you know, you put enough fuel in there for three laps, you know, maybe uh, when your first lap goes bad, you just back off, you know, try to find a nice gap, and then uh, go for that, uh, basically your third lap, and as hope you can uh, get a good time. As Preto kisses the wall on the exit of that last corner, he's coming up to the stripe now, Let's see where he ends up. 
does not improve. So Parsons has now clawed his way up to third. Boy, I tell you, there are some guys that have not yet been heard from looking down through timing and scoring. Marty Uren is one. David Poole has just now jumped up to provisionally in fifth, but he has a lot of speed around this place. Marty Uren showing great practice. His pace is mired back in the field. Chris Moses back there in 12th has not improved upon his first uh, timed lap. Well, Monroy, right. Speaking of Marty. Go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, speaking of Marty, he's actually only two tenths off the current pole sitter. So if he uh, can get this lap in, you know, he can jump up to uh, about third, maybe even second. We're on board with Marty. Let's see if he can keep it together here. He's got some traffic slightly ahead. like that's the Corvette of Trussler. We lost a bunch of time in the middle there. So unless it could pull a rabbit out of his uh, hat. I tell you, all these little nicks and dings on these uh, these Armcos, even if they're minor hits, will cost you speed around here. They really add up to quite a bit of time. So let's see what Marty ends up here as time begins to wind down. We just got uh, over two minutes to go in qualifying. Marty the fifth. Wow. 1.8 seconds off the pace, but ends up in P5. Back on board with Wyatt Good. I cannot get my Twitch chat to work. It's not going to happen, I don't think. And Good is up big in Sector 2. Nearly four tenths. He's got traffic up ahead. Uh, looks like that same Ferrari that, that botched an earlier lap he was on. Wyatt already giving up the business. Letting him know he's there. actually help Wyatt. He's going to get a bit of a toe here on the exit. Oh yeah. Oh wow. To a, helped him big time to a 2.16.7. Oh, yeah, sir. nice time by Wyatt. That is the quickest time we've seen in GT2 around here by far. Prado's currently two tenths down in the first sector. So that's going to be difficult to match for Prado for nearly all these guys. Yeah, and well, that's going on, I can tell you. Aaron Parsons is in the pits. So is Marty Uren and Juan Monroy. They are done for this qualifying period. Chris Moses as well is done. He is going to do no, no better than 14th on the grid, Al. So Prado doing the work here, doing what he needs to do. He needs to... Start ahead of White, who's leading him in the championship. So Prato seven tenths off in the second split. Prato is carrying weight tonight. Prato's carrying significant weight compared to Good in there. He is, but still showing great pace. Yeah. And so is uh, Aaron Parsons, uh, 
Um, Aaron and Andre is obviously carrying the same amount of weight and uh, showing a lot of speed. Now, I didn't get a chance to see David Poole's second sector time, but oh no, he's well off. But he did get another okay. lap in. So not sure if Preto's going to be able to get this one in. It's going to be close. And it does not improve. So. Triana. Triana's moved up to 8th. And that's going to do it in qualifying. Why a good... His first poll here at NAGP started second at uh, Barber. And wow, what a lap by Wyatt. Yeah, very impressive stuff. It has to be said, I think the surprise for me is Alex White really, uh, he is not, he actually went the other way on his weight. He usually is, is adding weight onto the car. But due to a subpar finish last week at Estoril, he actually got uh, some weight reduction. However, only manages to run a, that uh, 218 too. So, Alex White, I don't think he's going to be very happy uh, with that fourth place starting position, even though it'd be pretty okay with the rest of us. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how good that Z4 is around here. Uh, we've seen in the past the Lambos obviously have done well. Um... The BMW obviously showing some good performance, but you suspect that Z4 might lack a bit of power at a track at this at this track, especially down these straights. Well, I actually wouldn't think it would matter so much with the amount of twisties that there are around here. But it's interesting you mentioned you saw an Alex White mistake there in qualifying, I believe it was. And uh, I actually, after doing some installation laps, was behind Alex White. He had made a few mistakes around there as well. So a little out of character, perhaps not uh, as much practice as Alex would have liked this week. As we have... Some well, the one thing... Go ahead. The one thing... I was going to say, the one thing that's going for Alex, though, is he's got the fuel mileage. So he might be able to jump these guys if he can stay within reach uh, during the pit stops. Yeah, certainly will be an advantage there, Rich, no doubt. Um, but, you know, for Wyatt and uh, the rest of the field, again, Wyatt is, he is not interested in trying to push for lap time at all. For Wyatt, it's the same as everybody else throughout the field. So uh, if Andres can kind of get up on it a little bit and get some heat on Wyatt, I think, it, you know, anything could happen. Any one of these guys can make a small mistake and, uh, and basically end their race. So anything could happen. Yeah, turn three uh, is a calamity corner here, so uh, we'll see what happens uh, at the start. And like you said, uh, anything can happen, and it will. <laughs> well, it looks like we've lost somebody. It looks like we lost Ryan Mayfield. He was in 10th. Let's hope he can get back in here. before we roll it over to the... Oh, wow, I'm pushing, I'm pushing 38, 39 drivers today. So full house here. Nearly. Oh, and he made it in just in time. Nice. Okay, well, hello, Ken Rodriguez. Thanks for joining us on the broadcast. I'm going to try to stop fixing my chat text on Twitch because it's not working, so. Thanks for tuning in, though. So uh, we want to make any predictions. Uh, is this uh, dry weather going to stay, or uh, do we think uh, the rain's still going to come in? I vote rain. Yeah, I personally, uh, whether it starts raining or not, um, I think weather is going to play a factor at some point. <laughs> 
I got a feeling. Oh, yeah. I got a feeling it'll start dry and then eventually start raining. So that will. Uh, I was gonna say I don't. What were you gonna say? Sorry. I was gonna say, uh, have we had a dry, a fully uh, complete dry race here ever? I don't. I don't think so. so. No. But while we got some time here, we get the guys going through their warm-up session. Uh, take a rundown, take a look at the standings here in GT2. Alex White leading with 132 points. Andres Preto behind him with 115. Chris Moses with 114. Parsons after that win last week of 110. And Marty Uren in fifth with 80. The top four guys certainly have a shot. Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, sorry, quickly. It's been... Aaron Parsons now three wins uh, <laughs> you know leads all other drivers in terms of total wins had only a no result there at Birmingham or else he would be right in the thick of this thing so Aaron Parsons has been coming on of late well that's uh, that's a huge point I mean any non-point finish in, especially this season more than ever the GT2 is almost uh, insurmountable. You, ha I mean, these guys have to take, we have to score points each race, and it's such a challenge. So I give these guys a lot of credit, especially the guys up front who are able to uh, consistently finish well and carry all that weight. But taking a look now, at, uh, go ahead. I'm gonna say now we are going to Bathurst after this uh, race, correct? Oh yeah, at night too. So that's uh, that's another uh, <laughs> that's another interesting scenario next week. So we'll deal with that. <laughs> we'll deal with that track in the days to come. But these guys gotta t tackle Macau before they get to that. Uh, to that beast of a track, Bathurst. But take a look at the team championship. Team Columbia, Preto and Juan Monroy leading with 193 points. WWRL7, David Rally and Alex White are second with 168. Team Brock Dam, Bam, GT2. That's John Houston and Aaron Parsons with 154 points. Precision Motor Racing's Tom Schubeck and Chris Moses are fourth with 147. And Kung Fu Racing's Ian Jolicoeur and Marty Uran are fifth with 122 and as we mentioned in the past this, these team championship battles sway pretty dramatically race after race so team columbia although out front by nearly 30 points that can change rather quickly so yeah and it was team columbia tied with that wwrl7 team uh on the start last week at Estoril and now they find themselves uh, quite uh, far ahead. T. Brock Dam Bam thanks to the fine strong run of Aaron Parsons for that win and teammate John Houston finishing well have uh, climbed up to third in that championship and right there in shouting distance too so you're absolutely right. I love the team classification that you know and I, I gotta tell you I'm a little surprised at the PMR run there in fourth place well and truly still in this thing uh, despite Chris Moses having well, what could be called a little bit of a lackluster season in GT2. Well, someone posted on the chat board here on Twitch. And, uh, well, talking about Wyatt Gooden, Wyatt Gooden and his uh, his performance. New guy, he's, already, he's won his first race. He's on pole here at Macau. And just his second race. And showing quite a bit of pace. Well, Wyatt is actually, he races in USF 2000, which is part of the road to Indy. So it's a formula car. We have, uh, we could just be seeing a future Indy car driver competing here at NAGP. So that is very cool. 
Yeah, that is great, Al, but I tell you something, there are a couple guys sitting right behind him uh, to start the race tonight who don't really care much about that, <laughs> who are looking to, uh, looking to take some honors here at this particular race tonight. It's great to have Wyatt uh, with us, however, so let's not lose sight of that uh, at all. So it's, uh, it's great and uh, uh, always nice to add uh, yet more talent to the, the already very talented NAGP ranks. Absolutely, and <laughs> oh boy, and um, <laughs> yeah, for any of these guys who are able to finish ahead of them, well, hey, just a little feather in their cap. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So here we go to the race. Ooh, it's hot. Ninety-six degree ambient temperature, one hundred nine degree track temperature. Conditions, sunny forecast. Looking at a lot of sunshine, so that's good for these guys. A lot of these guys probably dreading the wet weather. But Brad, while we got a few moments here, let's run down the starting order from Paul. His first Paul here at NAGP. Why good? Andres Preto starting second. Aaron Parsons third. Alex White fourth, and David Poole fifth. Marty Uren starts 6th, Juan Monroy is in 7th, Rodrigo Triana starts 8th, Esteban Palacio in 9th, and David Rally 10th. Alejandro Nieto 11th, Tiago Canola 12th, Chris Moses 13th, Ian Jolico 14th, and Greg Myers 15th. Marco Conti starts 16th, John Houston 17th, Kevin Miller 18th, Mike Trussler in 19th, and Laurent Weissman in 20th. Tom Schubeck, 21st, Christian Hamilton, 22nd, Mike Greatrix, 23rd, Johnny Lugnas, 24th, Jack Ivey, 25th. Matt Taylor starts 26th, Jonathan Cuppert in 27th, Lou Mascarelli in 28th, Brian Story in 29th, Daniel Wilkerson in 30th. John Watson, 31st, Chuck Carter, 32nd, Montgomery Jr., 33rd, Phil Hooks, 34th, and Mike Monahan, 35th. Let's see here. Kevin Savoie starts 36. Ke uh, Gup Douglas in 37th. Ryan Schleif is in 38th. And we're set and ready to go. Huge a lot of field here tonight as we're about to go green from Macau. A lot of people getting late to the grid here. There we go. Yeah, as the track well, continues to heat up. Well, they expected it to rain. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting first few corners here let's hope these guys can keep their composure and we're green why with a great start Preto as Wyatt squeezes Preto a little bit this is a very fast run into turn one Prado going to have a look on the outside. Wyatt hangs on to that position. Nicely done. What an incredible job these guys are doing back here. Incredible job. Beautiful racing. Wow, great job is right. As this battle, as Wyatt Good continues to lead, Preto and White, White made up a position, got ahead of Parsons. Parsons a little slow, uh, he loses two positions to White and Poole. Take a look, looking further back, Marty Uren up to sixth. Palacio with a good start. He's running seventh. And Yato is eighth. Looking further back. Rally. Triana. Monroy and Moses. So Mon uh, Rally doing a good job getting ahead of Monroy. That's going to be big for those team points.
These guys make their way around the hairpin. Very, very slow corner, but hey, got to hand it to these guys. They're doing a great job. Yeah, they are doing a great job. And now, now that we're through the first lap and everybody's through clean, I'm wondering what's going to happen at this point. But so far, so good. I'm uh, really anxious to see how this race unfolds from here on out. Yeah, Andre certainly hasn't given up too much ground to Wyatt Gooden yet, and I'm really a little surprised by the Alex White speed after getting around Aaron Parsons. Really looking to, to hound those two in front of him. And I suspect here, even with a little bit of extra weight Andre's is carrying that, he may have a little bit of a tire advantage if this race stays pretty hot like this uh, compared to Wyatt's Dunlops. Yeah, that's... Uh, These guys, of course, had one... Go ahead, Brad. Sorry, sorry Al. These guys had one... These guys had one heck of a fight out there at Birmingham, as you recall, uh, with the same type of tire situation going on. So we'll see if Andres Preto can uh, gain the advantage instead of losing out this time. Yeah, that's a big key here as the heat, as the track continues to heat up, those Dunlops tend to wear a bit quicker than the Michelins. Ooh, as Preto taps the wall a little bit, but, uh, you know, if the... Dunlops tend to favor the wet conditions a little better than the other tires. I mean, there's a... As Preto makes up a bit of time there in that sector, that part of the track, rather. Preto not hanging on to good, doing a great job keeping close. As White could start to fade a little bit from those two guys up front. Looks like he might fall under pressure from... David Poole as he's, uh, ooh, Poole nearly gets, yeah, taking an unusual line through there. It's Ron Poole yeah, with Palacio, go ahead. Yeah, you might not see the go preferred ahead. line. Yeah, you notice might you not saw be that the too, preferred right? line, but yeah, in, in, any line that you get through uh, where, where you don't ra end your race is a pretty good line, really. So good job by... Uh, Marty Uran, defending race winner here. Showing some good pace. Not far off of Aaron Parsons. This corner coming up, which is turn one, it's so fast and so easy to run wide here if you don't get it right. You see some guys it clip that inside barrier. Go ahead, Brad. It's very easy to clip the inside barrier as well, Al. That's right. Yeah, it's interesting as I look through the field here. I, I, everybody is on their game plan, and that game plan is survival. So I'm wondering now that uh, uh, they have gotten a little comfortable with some of these laps, just who's going to be able to start to uh, offer a little bit of push and who is, is going to remain cautious. So Alejandro Nieto feeling some heat from... David Raleigh. Raleigh currently in the ninth position. Putting the pressure on early in this race. This track just takes so much concentration. Oh, I, I always hated running here. Any little mistake is... just so costly. You lose so much straight line speed, especially down that front stretch. Well, I am in the category of loving it. I'm one of those, and uh, I, I do appreciate the challenge of, of getting around this place and even trying to get to it through a few spots maybe a little faster than some of the other guys. A lot of fun. Marco Cotti, who started, I believe, at 20th, is up to 13th, and Really putting the heat on Chris Moses. As we approach the hairpin, where's that look right button? There it is. <laughs> well, we've seen that Lambo perform well here in the in the past, and Marco Conti sure putting it to good use at the moment. See that that corner there is probably the only reason why 
someone would buy track IR so you could actually see look at the corner when you're turning in and I know Chris Moses has track IR so using it to his full advantage here tonight sure will help now taking a look through timing and scoring I do see oh Kevin Savoy had a no qual did he not I believe uh, he, he got dropped <laughs> Nah, okay. He got dropped on oh, qualifying. Okay. Oh! Jolie Core getting hounded now by Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller looking strong in that Aston Martin. And behind that, yeah, we, got, we got quite a battle between, sorry, Greg Myers and Tiago Canola as Houston take a look on the inside. Not going to happen. What a battle. Go ahead, Brett. Yeah, real quickly, I'll just say, uh, Kevin, I did have a chance to talk to Kevin Miller before the race, and he has put in some pretty dedicated practice for this event, so Kevin Miller feels like he's pretty confident. Yeah, I know he's been spending some time with you, Brad. Doing a great job, and it's showing because he's, his performance the last few races have been exceptional. Yeah, probably doesn't have too much to do with me, but uh, he has certainly been putting in a little bit of extra practice of late, and it shows out on track. Right along with Greg Myers, who's putting the heat on Tiago. And now Kevin Miller falling under pressure from this group of, uh, this train of cars here. Yeah, he's got quite a bit of talent to contend with there right behind him. Mike Retrex has suffered an accident from the I think it was the 20th position, so Mike Retrix out of this race, Al. Oh, that's a shame. I've got uh, Chuck Carter already in the uh, in the pit lane. you got John Wathen with heavy damage. Oh, I think John just ended his race. Wathen's out. I'm shocked. <laughs> Ooh, Taylor losing it right in front of Shoeback. That's a tough spot. He better get that turned around quickly. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh is right. This is what... Well, that could have been a lot worse. But the guys get by okay. So Schleif, who... Currently in the sun run... Ooh, with the... Wow. Late-breaking move on Jack Ivy. On uh, Jack Ivy gets the pass done, so... Wow, what a pass from Schleif. Cup Douglas in the Aston, getting chased down by Phil Hooks. Phil, also a former no-grip racer. Mikey Monahan, back in 33rd. Mikey has shown great pace of practice, especially in the wet. But that no qual is going to languish him back to 33rd. Savoie is 34th, way back. Greatrix in the pits, he's done. Chuck Carter, still on track. I trust Trussler's parked it. That's everybody. So back out front, Wyatt Gooden continues to lead. Let's take a look at those gaps. Yeah, Wyatt Gooden just continuing to pull out a couple tents here and there over Andres Prieto. And so far that uh, the tire issue we talked about, possible tire issue, has not come to fruition. So in fact, uh, Wyatt Gooden is... Yeah, he's continuing to pull out a little bit of ground. I think Andres Prieto, for whatever reason, is actually a little off the pace to start this race from uh, the kind of times we saw in the week of practice. So maybe overdriving the car a little bit here early. So that gap is nearly three seconds. The gap between Prieto and White is about two. A little surprised David Poole hasn't been able to reel Alex White in as Poole is showing some good pace. Yeah, indeed, Al. I completely agree, and I, it's a little bit of a mystery to me, but maybe David Poole has picked up some type of aero damage or something, or maybe that's just his pace. However, we did see him on much better times earlier. Track temperature continues to run very high at 114 degrees Fahrenheit. As Parsons co continues to run fifth. Go ahead, Rich. I was just going to say, actually, both ambient and track temperature have dipped down just a hair, and uh, I'll keep an eye on that to see if it starts a downward spiral. Okay. <laughs> and it should be noted too, real quickly, as these pit stops uh, do come up here and 
Oh, and in a little bit, it's an extremely tricky pit lane entry here. So I'm sure that most of these guys have had at least one or two runs in. But even if you've made a couple practice runs into that pit lane, it's still very tricky. Well, David Raleigh has gotten by Nieto. Nieto with some heavy damage to the right front of that BMW. But still appears to be... Late into one. He's, yeah, he's going to get by Chuck Carter there in the Lambo. Bonroy running in 10th. He's getting followed by Moses. And I'll tell you what. Got to hand it to Mark O'Connor. He's been able to hang on to the bumper of Moses. Who's running in the 11th spot. And Rodrigo Triana has climbed his way up into this fight as well. So uh, this is a three-way battle here. As these three get, get by Chuck Tough position for Chuck to be in. Well, it's also a tough position for Chris Moses to be in, uh, having to fight these guys there in the 11th spot. He is, after all, a, a third place currently in the GT2 championship points. So Chris Moses looking a little off the pace and perhaps losing a few points to these guys in front of him. Ooh, Connie with a big lurch. That's going to make Connie feel pretty good that he's... Uh, Able to hang on to the back of Moses here. But I'll tell you what, these guys aren't far off. Monroy and Yato. Take a look up ahead as Monroy now has reeled uh, Yato in. Monroy's going to be looking for a way by shortly. He's got to get by because Raleigh's checking out. And that is a battle for the team points. Monroy knows what's at stake here. Andres Pretos, Andre Pretos teammate. Yeah, indeed. And uh, again, that uh, uh, Team Columbia did take over those points last week. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely right. Juan Monroy is going to want to answer that. He oh, gets it done. As he has picked up. So Nato gets All by right, for that, that nine battle. <laughs> Billy Core running on his own in 14th. Pretty quiet run for him. Well, tell you what, back here in the fifth, holy smokes. We got Miller, Houston, Vassman. This is incredible. All these four or five guys. We got another uh, Z4 right behind. Ooh, Vassman heavy into the wall. These guys are feeling good. They felt the track out. They're ready to go. Houston taking a look into turn one, but unable to get it done as Greg Myers has gotten by Kevin Miller. But Hamilton's in the mix as well. He's he's trailing trailing Laurent. Wow. Those guys are like four wide going down the straight. And I picked up on him. That was incredible. Back on board with Houston as he puts the heat on Kevin Miller. Yeah, and as you watch that battle, I'll go ahead and give you an update on that the battle over 10th place. That uh, battle is also still very close. Nieto, Moses, Conti, and Triana. Andres Cole checking in. Hello, Andres. So we got a five-way battle here as Greg Myers has, start to, has started to put a little distance between him and Miller. Miller, however, looks like Houston's got some pace on Kevin. Yeah, and a quick update. Marco Conti hounding Chris Moses over that 11th position has turned it around in the hairpin. A couple close moments with guys getting by. Marco got it straightened out. He is now back in the 14th uh, position. Tough break for Marco. That's Take a look up front as Wyatt Gooden continues to lead. He really hasn't uh, 
this gap has been about three seconds for uh, a few laps now, so I think the pace has started to settle down between the two. Yeah, last lap by actually, Wyatt Gooden did pull out uh, one half a second of a lead. It was pretty static up until then, though. You're right, Al. So looks like Wyatt's got a little, little damage to the right side of his uh, BMW and the left side. So looks like he's made some contact with the wall. But I guess if you don't have any damage here, you're not trying. So <laughs> good point. So White continues to run in that third spot. Let's take a look further back at that other battle going on. Ooh, I think uh, Greg Myers is locked up. That caused a bit of a moment. That allowed Houston to get by for that 15th spot. So Greg, oh, he's back out front. So Greg had a... Uh, I'm not sure what's up with Greg. Looks like he locked up a little technical glitch. And now all these guys are battling battling uh, Houston. Houston, uh, you can already tell, he's starting to uh, pull away from Miller. Now Miller's going to fall under pressure from uh, Laurent and possibly Christian, uh, Christian Hamilton. So I just caught Greg off in the distance there, kind of locked up. So that's unfortunate for Greg, but it does show him on track still. Yeah, no doubt a scary moment for those guys behind. And in that type of close battle, you just hope it doesn't happen again. As uh, that could uh, ruin uh, that uh, fantastic battle we're watching there. Oh, there he is again. He's back on track on in 15th. So it's a bit, bit of a uh, lag issue there for Greg. But he's back at it. So he is running in that 15th spot. The result of uh, that lockup by uh, Greg has allowed... Uh, these guys, well, these guys had to take evasive action, but in doing so, that allowed Houston by, and Miller, Vassman, and Hamilton all battling for that, those final uh, points paying position. So what a great fight here. Thomas Schubeck, he's starting to close in on these guys as well, so I'll tell you what, I'm very surprised we haven't seen a lot more attrition up to this point. I was expecting to hear a lot of guys disconnecting, but... Well, there's one, but... Uh, well, <laughs> Moses just had a close one. Now, Tiago Canola somehow has fallen back to the 22nd, and he is battling Johnny Lugnut side by side. Ooh! They bump a little bit. Lugnut's given no quarter there. Wow, that's, uh, that was a high-speed tap there, door-to-door. -door. So, yeah, that great battle there, and I'll give you a quick update on one just a little further back for the 28th position, Jack Ivey, Dan Wilkerson, and Phil Hooks. Guys, we don't have the opportunity to mention as much as we'd like. We're going at it pretty darn hard for that uh, 28th position as well. As Montgomery Jr. battle uh, in the middle of this uh, battle as well, he's caught up to a little bit of a barble there, but he's caught up to Tiago. Tiago really anxious to get by here. I think he's... Must have had some kind of mistake that's dropped him back to the 22nd spot. He was up in the top 10, I believe. Uh, apologize, we missed that, but. But that's the, uh, that's the issue here. You, uh, you fall back. It's not, it's nearly impossible to get by anybody here, especially this part of the track. Tiago's got some work cut out for him. Take a look at Brian Story. Ooh, heavy damage to the left side of his Aston. Looks like he's coming up on Chuck Carter, who's a lap down. John Cuppet, 25th. The Mustang. Monahan has jumped up to 26th. Mascarelli's running at 27th. Jack Ivey. Dan Wilkerson doing battle here for this. 28th spot. Ooh, as uh, looks like uh, Liquid Lou had a bit of a moment. Oh yeah, that's a lot of you guys to get by. So Lou is falling back to the 30th posi uh, position. 
Gup Douglas looks like he's a little off the pace. So I thought he might have had a puncture, but he's okay. As him and Schleife. Ooh, Schleife. A little hot on the throttle there. He loses it. Let's take a take a look back out front. Take a quick look at the gaps here. It's now ooh, the lead's now 6.1 seconds. So something must have happened to Andres to lose that amount of time. A couple seconds within a a number of laps here. Yeah, Andres has been leaking a little bit of time. Uh, Wyatt Gooden is obviously putting a great drive toward the front, simply not making uh, nearly as many uh, small mistakes. And really now, Alex White is, I think, starting to think about taking advantage, maybe making some inroads into that gap to Andres Preto uh, himself. Working lap 11 here. Expect the guys to start coming in around 12 or 13. Some guys may go 13. Lap. Some guys oh. may come in a little early. Sorry, Al. Juan Monroy is out of this race. Out with suspension damage from the ninth position. Wow, that is devastating. So there you have it. We talked about that team battle. Right now, WWRL7. These guys, Rally and Alex White. They're going to be able to make up some ground here if, uh, if both of them can remain on track and get some points. And Rally is putting yeah. in one heck of a race, uh, and just behind them there is another heck of a race going on there between that Nieto, Moses, and now Triana. They have a three-way battle going on for what is now the top ten. It, it appears to me that Nieto has just uh, run his tires off. He's sliding everywhere. Uh, Chris is doing everything he can to try and get by him cleanly. He's just, uh, he just keeps on getting these bad runs on him and you're going into terrible corners. Uh, but this battle for ninth has been heating up now and it looks like uh, another lap or two you can even have Ian uh, joining this fight. Let's see if Chris is able to get a run on Yeto here down the straight. Last lap. Uh, this is the same place Chris had a run on again. Ooh. Oh, we get this. This is going to be tough. Oh, oh! Chris Moses, heavy damage to that. Uh, and we got Houston. Wow. Houston gets into the back of Greg Myers. Wow. What incredible, incredible. What an incredible accent. Chris is, is missing his front clip. And this is just bunched up the field. Yeah, Chris was just, he, he finally just said, you know, I got to get by. It's been four or five laps. I have to try to do it, and um, it didn't work out. Amazing. He, uh, we, it was, he was just going in there way too hot. I mean, I think... Uh, well, Nito, Nito kind of pinched him off into the right-hand side of the track. And uh, coming up to that right-hander, there was just no hope for Chris making it through that corner. Now, this is this is this has created a log jam here, but I'll tell you what, if Chris can stay out ahead of these guys and make it into the pits, it might not be too bad for him, but this is just a train of cars as Miller gives him Uh oh. Oh Wow, what a turn of events. Unbelievable. That really put Kevin in a difficult spot. That yeah. uh, that that was that was tough there for Kevin. Well, that changes things a little bit. So we have 14th through 20th. Well, all within about a second and a half of each other. But. While that's going on, I can tell you Dave, David Rally has been the first to answer here as far as pit stops go. David Rally has come into the pits, so the second half of WWLR7 ready to go the rest of the way. So Rally has pitted and he rejoins in 22nd. As looks like Thomas Schubeck has gotten together with, uh, I believe that's Christian. We have, uh, looks like Lugnuts has turned around. Wow, this uh, and the closing uh, moments of this first stint has become a bit of a, well, 
I don't know how you describe it. Well, let me tell you this, Al. Chris Moses, involved in a wreck uh, when he was running 11th, comes into the pits in 12th position minus a splitter. So, uh, uh, all other things aside, uh, relative to position, Chris Moses not in too bad a shape. So Wyatt now starting to come up on some lap traffic. Yeah, well, Andres is going to need all the help that he can get, and if uh, he gets it in the form of lap traffic, he's certainly not going to mind, but uh, Mike Wyatt Gooden certainly putting on the display of talent that um, that he is quickly becoming known for. <laughs> so it looks like Juan Monroy is in uh, someone else's uh, pit stall there. Oh, yeah, Nieto is in... Kevin Miller's pit box, so Miller is having to wait. So this has just turned out to be a devastating night for Miller. Oh, that is a bummer for Kevin after running so strong. Alex White, David Poole into the pits, out. So Wyatt, oh, still so Wyatt gets by okay. Meanwhile, Gup Douglas and Lou Mascarelli going at it. Let's see, Preto has remained out. Looks like Alex White's in the pits. Parsons to third. David Poole is in. Kevin Miller now getting service and he is away. Chris Moses finally pulling out of the pits. Triana into the pit lane. Joe Boy, an interesting stays turn out. of events. Yeah, uh, Ian, Triana, uh, Myers, Vassman, some of these guys are going to get quite a lift from uh, all those happenings here before pit stops. I'll tell you what, what turned out, I mean, the race started so clean, I mean, incredibly clean, I couldn't believe it, but, you know, I was kind of shocked especially the, given the nature of the track, but just that one moment, it seemed like uh, once uh, Moses uh, had that, that moment, that just, the wheels came off here <laughs> for everybody, it seemed. Yeah, it sure did. Uh, once they got stacked up and really in the heat of uh, in the heat of passion, certainly the heat and the tires weren't looking too good. Rich, how is our track conditions going? Our track, it's been, uh, the temperatures have been falling, still no sign of rain, but we are down almost 10 degrees from, well, a little bit less than 10 degrees from the start of the race. Uh, ambient and track have both been going down. Ooh, rally into the wall. Um, yeah, Hamilton, though, continues to, uh, has yet to pit. Story remains out. In. Triana is away, so Prado is in. This is going to be interesting now as Prado into the pit lane. Uh, uh, Wyatt has. Parsons coming in too. Wyatt White's has stayed out. Parsons is in. You know, Alex White has made his pit stop. He is, however, now behind Marco Conti, who has not yet made a pit stop. Alex White much, much faster, but being held up at the moment by Marco Conti until he does make that pit stop. Oh, that is the most frustrating thing in the world when you have somebody racing you for position that's really not for position. Yeah, and uh, it's this could actually hurt Alex White. Aaron Parsons was not so far off his bumper that uh, Aaron, with a good pit stop, cannot potentially get right back on his bumper. So it looks like Marco's moving over to give White that spot, perhaps. Okay. Yep. So Marco is electing to stay out. Joe LaCour into the pit lane. So I think that, uh, that might have hurt White's chances a bit. Uh, if he was hoping to get out ahead of, of uh, Preto as Parsons now rejoins. Palacio heading out. Oh, here's a story. Palacio running quietly in seventh here. So 
he may move up a couple couple guys up ahead still need to pit so Palacio putting in a good run yeah and started from that seventh position as well and you're absolutely right it has been quiet but it's been clean and it's nice to see because Esteban has not put in some good results of late Christian Hamilton out of the race with suspension damage Al that's terrible news So let's see if Wyatt decides to pit. He does not. He's going to stay out. Interesting uh, strategy here from Wyatt. Uh, he doesn't want to stay out too much longer because his lap times are falling off. Ooh, uh, Alejandro Nito is out with an engine. Oh, well, they're dropping like flies now, Al. So. Working uh, lap saying, 15, uh, go ahead. Yeah, well, good and staying out. Uh, I mean, his laps are really falling off right now. Uh, if he stays out too long, like, he could could uh, give himself a uh, lead back to Andres, possibly. Well, we saw yeah, you're absolutely right. We saw that race at Birmingham where he, uh, his first race there, where he stayed out a little bit, and he had quite a gap on... A similar gap on uh, on Andre and Andre had a dynamite stop and came out just you know about a second and a half. I mean the the rest of that second stint at, stint at Birmingham it was about a second between each other the whole second stint. So see if that comes into play here yet again. And it's you know he's got some lap traffic up ahead in the twisty parts of this track. So it's going to yeah. Well, not only are his lap times. Yeah, not only is lap time's pretty far off, but the length of the track as well doesn't help him out. So instead of losing perhaps a three or four tenths on those worn tires, he's now losing a couple three seconds a lap. Uh, and Andres, uh, really, when he gets his bit between the, the teeth, generally runs a little quicker deeper into the race and after stop. So Wyatt will want to get in quickly. So I suspect Wyatt will be pitting in on this lap. Uh, this lap. He's got to see what is what his lap times are turning into as looks like that might have been Joe LaCour who had a, a moment there. Now looking through timing and scoring, I think Aaron Parsons has been in, but uh, indicative of his pit stop time, it looks to me like he may have double stinted his tires. Wow. Well, if he did, it really didn't help him too much as he came out behind Alex. So Wyatt into the pit lane. So now we keep an eye on Preto, who is running second now, approaching the hairpin. Ooh, this is a big pit stop. Big moment. Big moment in this race. It is, Al. Oh. oh, forget I said anything. I was looking. I had my timing and scoring mixed up. I don't think Aaron Parsons did double spin. Yeah, Wyatt, of course, had uh, had a lot of questions for some of the regulars around here on those pit stops, looking to make them a little bit better. So we'll see if it pays off. Now Preto closing in, about to approach the front straight. Wyatt is away. Good start from Wyatt. Long pit lane, however. Gonna get out ahead. It's a good start from good. But that gap has shrunk. I'm not afraid of ahead. No, I think it's just a minor right. timing and time for him. Yeah. yeah. But he's got a run on him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's he certainly him. does. Yeah, I hope Andres doesn't uh, do too much overdriving here. Wyatt, of course, very skilled. Uh, if there is some some type of move, I think they'll give each other plenty of room. But Andres, he, I think he knows that this is going to be his best chance here. This is certainly a win that Preto needs. He's got some traffic up ahead as well. It could play a part in this. Looks like that might be Schubeck up ahead in the Mercedes. So... 
Looks like a, that's fortunate. A, re a replay of Birmingham. Yeah, it's good that Schubeck is ahead of these guys at the moment because he's going to be uh, he's going to be pretty heads up, up about this battle and make sure they get through cleanly, as cleanly as possible around here anyway. Problem is, there's just nowhere to go, and uh, now White's trying to force the issue. Oh. That just hurt. Yeah, you know, that's part of the problem of this track is, is that, I mean, you know, Schubert's trying to do his best to not hamper that, this battle between these two guys. And could have been a little nicer, but a little cleaner, rather, but. Well. It, uh, it is a difficult place, and uh, at least they both got through with uh, minimal minimal damage. Now, I'm looking through timing and scoring here. Marco Oconti has yet to come in. Now, over Marty Urin now is uh, pressing him for that position on the fresher tires. So, that a battle for the sixth position as they run on track. Also, should be noted, Gregory Myers has closed up to Rodrigo Triana fighting over that tenth position. So we're going to see here if Andre is able to get a run. Yeah, it looks like he may. This is going to be his best opportunity. That BMW has good legs down the straight, though, Al. That takes another look. Just not close enough. If Prado could just stay a little closer coming out of that last corner... Uh, he could get him into turn one. He, you pulled up quite a quite a lot there. You're getting a good draft. Yeah, the, with that arrow damage on Andres. Oh, and a, added a little bit of arrow damage. Certainly not going to help. This may be the end of uh, Andres' run here. That front end is looking pretty beat up. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, Alex White continues in that third position. Parsons hangs on to fourth. David Poole is running fifth. Marty Uran in the sixth spot. Palacio. So Palacio running in seventh. With Triana and Greg Myers now. These two doing having a nice battle here in the second stint. Oh, well, you watch that battle. I'll give you a quick update as David Rally is into the Back pits into because the pits. he is missing a front splitter. Unbelievable. Oh, he's getting service now, but wow. Oh, a lap car. A lap car is in front of Wyatt. That is Ryan Schleif. Now in front of Andre, and he gets by okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I, I just don't think Andre's is going to be able to pull off any late race magic here, but hey, mistakes are still possible around this place, and uh, anybody's susceptible to them. So uh, it's going to be a tough tough ask I think for Andres uh, the rest of the way to go here but it's been a great battle out front yeah basically uh, what happened was why uh, not why I'm sorry uh, Schleif was kind of stuck in the hairpin getting going again and why ran up on him and had nowhere to go he had just had to wait and that uh, closed everything back up again I tell you what I'm watching now Al is I'm watching a battle between Marty Wren and David Poole. Marty Wren has closed up on David Poole uh, to within about a second. So that is a battle over the fifth position. So Marty Wren to McLaren's going at it. Taking a look further back, Joe LaCour up to the top 10. He's closing in on Greg Myers and Triana. Bassman running in 11th. 
I don't think that has Vassman pitted yet. No. So Vassman, I don't think so. I don't think he has. So he's running in 11. Canola has worked his way back up to 12th from the 20. He was in the 20s. Connie behind him at 13th. Got Douglas up to 14th with Johnny Lugnuts running 15th in the points. And Montgomery Jr., the last point paying position. Wilkerson. You no, know, Laurent may have come in. Wilkerson nearly in the points. He's running 17th. Oh, Wilkerson's going to bring it into the pit lane late. Mascarelli's running 18th. Monahan is back in 19th. He's made up a bit of ground. Schleif in 20th. Chris Moses now in 21st. His teammate behind him in 22nd. Miserable night for PMR. Jonathan Cubitt, 23rd. Kevin Miller, what was a great opening stint. Sees him now back in 24th. Bill Hooks, 25th. Houston as well, back in 26th. Brian Story, 27th. Rally rejoins at 28th. Chuck Carter, 29th. That's the last of the running cars. So the battle, the closest battle on track is up at the front between Good and Preto. The lap traffic is going to play a big factor in this race right now. Well, we just hope these guys, as Chuck does a great job moving out of the way, coming up on Mascarelli. Lots of experience, Chuck Carter. You know, you knows what the deal is. So this lap traffic, uh, no, no doubt benefiting Prieto as he's able to stay on the bumper of Gooden as they get by Mascarelli. Unfortunately for Prieto, he's given basically wide two bump drafts to get through. Boy, I just don't know. With quiet speed, it's, uh, it's going to come down to some type of lap traffic snafu or something. I, I'll tell you what. Wyatt's been running a little bit harder. Uh, the last time through, he, he came through the uh, last kink, just n nearly clipped the wall right where there's an opening. And if he does that again, it goes just a hair wider, there's not going to be anything left of that car. Well, it's interesting. We did see at Birmingham Wyatt give up a little bit of pace there toward the end of that second stint by trying to push a little harder in the same situation with Andres right behind him. Andre just not not able to get close enough on the exit of this uh, that final corner as they approach the kink. Into turn one. Yep, and while you watch that battle, I'll go ahead and give you another update. Still some very good battles going on out there in track. Gup Douglas and Salem Montgomery are fighting it out for the 14th position. Well, Laurent and Tiago are fighting for 11th, and just ahead of them, Ian Jolicor and Gregory Meyer is fighting over the 9th position. So Wyatt carrying 30 kilograms of success ballast. I believe Preto's carrying 80. Uh, 50. 50 for Prieto. 30 for Wyatt. Oh, I apologize. 50. So, yeah, once that, uh, yeah, Wyatt's really able, uh, you can see it now, he's starting to pull away, but. And I don't see any lap traffic in sight. Prieto's really good through that section. He's able to really close up a 
a bit of time on Wyatt. He's a little better through there, but Wyatt's going to beat in the third sector. It's that last kink uh, just before the start finish line. Wyatt just pulls out a huge gap. Yeah, and that's a tough spot if you want to end up uh, trying to overtake a guy at turn three uh, to lose mom that momentum early. That's, Here's the turn coming up. Yeah, that's why Chris Moses was so uh, kind of, I, I would say, he ordinarily wouldn't take a, have taken that risk into turn two with that guy um, in, in front if he knew that th there was no other possible way for him to get past. I think he knew he was taking a risk there. And, uh, boy, unfortunately, just ended in tears. So Preto on the approach to turn one. Nice run out of the exit of that kink. He's really good through there. But, again, just not able to close that gap and get a run on him into turn one. That BMW is very strong uh, with straight line speed. So we got just over 10 minutes to go in this race. If you're just joining us, Wyatt Good leading Andres Preto here at Macau. You know, temps have been continuing to drop. They're down a lot now. They're, they're down over, over 10 degrees, uh, ambient and track. And I'm starting to wonder if Gooden stayed with like hard rears and maybe Andre's on mediums now or something. Because uh, he's not he's not getting away from Andre. Uh, yeah, interesting observation. I don't know that rain's going to be too much a factor at this point. We're running down toward the, oh, probably no more than four or five laps left to go here. But that's an interesting observation. Could very well be. So as this, lead, as this battle continues to carry on, let's uh, take a quick look behind as White continues to run on his own in third with Parsons followed by David Poole and it looks like Marty Uran has just gotten by Thomas Schubeck. Palacio continues in seventh. Triana and Jolie Kaur. Not sure what happened to Greg Myers. Well, he's back in 10th, so Greg has given up two positions there. So we missed that. Greg continues. However, in the top 10, Canola running in the 11th. With Vassman, followed by Marco Connie in the points. Montgomery Jr. in 14th. Monahan now up into the points after starting from the back. And Chris Moses somehow has managed to claw his way back into the points. So he is running in the final points paying position. So we pick up this battle up front yet again. Gap about a second. I tell you, it's interesting. Andres is, uh, with all that aero damage, is running faster laps now than he was uh, uh, to begin this race. So now in the uh, 218s, pretty consistent the last couple laps. So definitely turning up the wick as much as he can at this point. Well, he has to because there has been nothing but clear track ahead of these guys for a little while now. So this lap traffic we were expecting to see is not there. Marty, you're in once again on the back bumper of David Poole for the fifth position. Wow, that must have been some mistake from David to allow Marty to close that gap up. You know, this is a battle that has been yo-yoing a little bit. Uh, Marty he, he gets a little close and falls back, and now he's getting close again.
Yeah, a little surprised to see David pull some 42 seconds off of the lead, I have to say. I did expect a little bit better pace from David Poole, and it has to be said, Marty Wren as well. I expected them to uh, keep those leaders a little bit closer in sight by the stage of the race. Yeah, that McLaren as well on Pirelli's, uh, you would think, would favor the heat. Hang on to this battle, see if uh, Marty can get a run on Poole going into turn one here. So nice exit for Marty. Marty may be able to get a run on Poole here. Picking up that draft off the back of David Poole's McLaren. Alright, it sounded like he lifted a little bit. Alright, I see why as he barrels into the wall. Drops a gear. And David Poole defending the inside. He's going to hang on to it. Up front, Andres is back on uh, White's tail with the lap traffic playing a factor again. So that's either Kevin Sav... Ooh, Andre with oh. a big mistake! Ooh, that could have been a lot worse. Man, he's lucky he didn't suffer a puncture. Now Andres... Oh. Yeah, the Porsche lets him by. I've said before, well, that's probably going to do it for Andres' run. I don't, I hesitate to say it again, but I think that this has got to do it for his run. Uh, to try to have a chance at this lead here. That uh, that was a pretty massive hit. That arrow damage has got to be up to 13 or 14 seconds by now. I, uh, yeah, I think he just got over anxious when he saw what was going on on Wyatt there and just, just lost it a little bit. And that, uh, but there's still lap traffic up ahead. And those guys, I think, are fighting for position just in front of them. I tell you, Andres had legitimately kept that gap very close and even picked up a, a tenth or two uh, the couple laps prior to that. And so was uh, really pushing hard and uh, was just right at the limit, I, I think, and just exposed himself to just uh, just that one hair over the limit. And, well, there you go. Yeah, that is that Montgomery-Conti battle. As Montgomery taking a look into turn one, This is going to be real interesting real soon. <laughs> we are working lap 23. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah, those guys may not give anything up here. Holy smokes. Yeah. Just over four minutes left. I mean, the problem is once you get in this section here, it's really hard to just let the guy buy. Oh, he lets him buy. Okay, there he goes. So nice job by Sale. Now work needs to be done on Conti. Really classy move by Salem. Really classy, and here as well. Very nicely done, guys. And those guys can resume their battle for that 14th spot, I believe. 13th spot. So, What a great job. Yep. What a great job by those two. Ended up hurt, hurting Andres a bit in the end, but, uh, but there's just nothing you could do about that. That was... Uh, as good a maneuvers as you can make. Taking a look at the laps real quick. Lap and, uh, working lap. It's like 24. This Salem really Montgomery Jr. has... Oh, he momentarily lagged in the hairpin. <laughs> I forget I said anything. Should be one more after this. Oh, 
I think you're gonna get uh, two more laps in. Well, you might be right. I think the most we've gone uh, here has been 25 laps. Oh, Rodrigo Triana from the eighth position has taken a DNF, Al. Unbelievable. A late DNF here at the uh, Macau. Yeah. Wow. That's moved Dean up to ninth. Myers to tenth. Ooh. Not sure what happened to Salem uh, as he's lost some time to Connie, a boatload of time, and he's fallen under pressure now from Vassman. Moses now is up to the 15th position, and Mike Monahan into the points, back up front. That's going to actually move Schubeck into the points once they get by Triana in the pit lane. PMR salvaging some points here late should they finish the race. But wow, Wyatt, going to be as much as Wyatt has really uh, put a gap between him and Andre. And I think you're right, Andre has finally has finally hey, uh, Andre's had go ahead. He's had to surrender, Al. Yeah, I mean he's driven as hard as he possibly can and He's just, uh, there's nothing left in that comfort. Well, a heck of a run for Andres. Hopefully he'll be able to finish it off here, whether we end on this lap or the one after. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to bring that, uh, that wounded Gumpert home and, uh, and call it really a pretty good night overall. So Wyatt, that should be the checkers. Nope. One more lap. One more lap. <laughs> one, one more lap of, of nerves getting around this place. That's the one thing that drives me nuts about, about GTR2 is as a spectator you have no idea where you are. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oops. So Preto is, uh, looks like he's given up on the fight. He's going to just nurse it back home to that second place finish. Oh, looking through timing and scoring here, I see... David Poole has taken a late DNF, Al. Oh, my goodness. David Poole out of this race. So David from the fifth Poole. position. Man, he has had a difficult season. Now, he is on the lead lap. I think that if the race does end next lap, he's going to end up uh, probably in the top ten. So he will still score good points. But, uh, yeah, his dismal... The season continues. Salem and Marco uh, Conti are really going at it. Time has expired. This will be the last lap. The so Salem Montgomery Jr. is caught back up, huh? He is all over Marco Conti's battered Lambo. This is going to be interesting. Going to keep an eye on. Boy, we have seen Marco Conti from time to time and running quite well up there in the field. It has just been some mistakes that have kept him from really scoring some uh, some big-time points here. Uh, but now, as you say, falling under pressure for that 11th position here late. Back up front with our leader, Wyatt Gooden. Approaching the final corner here. There you have it, Wyatt Gooden wins at Macau. What a great job by Wyatt. Take his second straight victory here at NAGP. Andre Preto takes second. Hard fought battle by Andre and Alex White quietly finishes in third. Really was not challenged at all from anybody behind him.
great run. And Parsons going to take that fourth position. Marty will finish in the top five. Uh, David Poole might uh, drop down a little bit further. Um, oh, hmm. is he going to go to the back of the plus one lap cars? Marty might be low on fuel, but he's going to make it. <laughs> As Palacio is going to take sixth. Joe LaCour. Wow, Joe LaCour is going to finish strong tonight in the seventh position. Assuming he can make it on fuel. As Marty looks like he was pedaling there near the end. Yeah, Ian Jolicor, I know, had uh, almost no practice. Showed up about 45 minutes before this race started tonight to get his first laps of practice in, so it was a great run uh, for Ian Jolicor. Yeah, and, it, and his car looks like he's had no practice. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, well, and he does still have to complete this lap, so not out of the woods yet, That's of course. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it looks like David Poole has dropped all the way down to 19. Oh. So Joe LaCour will finish seventh. Greg Meyer is going to take that eighth spot. Canola ninth. Great job by Canola. He was way back in. 22nd, I believe, at one point, started up near the front, battled back to take the ninth spot. A great job by him. And Marco Carney, that's it. That's the last of your lead lap cars. Let's see if we can bring Wyatt in here. Wyatt. Do you copy? Hello, Wyatt. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if he needed a break after that. Uh, <laughs> a quick, quick run to the towel, uh, to towel the face off, maybe grab a, a drink. Uh, pretty understandable. Uh, it's unfortunate we would have liked to have a, a word with him, but nonetheless, a great run for Wyatt here tonight, taking pole and winning his second straight race, and uh, you know, drove quite well. Put up, had a nice gap on Preto up until uh, pit stops. Preto yet again with a with a great stop. Wyatt stand out a little bit later, might have cost him some time. Made it made it a great watch, uh, great viewing for us there at the end. That battle between those two. Well, it'd be great to see the guy uh, come back uh, as we start the, the next season coming up here. Well, it's going to be a little while yet, but it'd be great to see him get a full uh, race schedule in and, uh, and see what he's able to do. Uh, but uh, in, in, to my mind, it was a great run for Andres Preto and Alex White as well. Those guys are fighting uh, for that overall championship after all. And Andres is going to pick up a couple points, but Alex White is still going to hold a pretty healthy lead as we head to Bathurst. Yes, and... Speaking of Bathurst, we will be there next week. So make sure, for those of you watching tonight, you tune in next uh, next Monday night for Bathurst, which uh, it's a challenging track in in daytime. But we will be running Bathurst at night. So you thought this track was a challenge? <laughs> Can't wait for Bathurst at night. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys will tune in. And uh, thanks again for showing. Uh, for tuning in tonight guys and uh, we'll see y'all next week thanks brad and thank you rich thank you out